Hello Vikings! Katrina here from Ride Like Viking and it is Thursday so I am going to answer questions and also talk about a topic and you might wonder why I have lots of water here and bottles and stuff and I have brought this out to explain a concept which is called a worry cup and it's related to horses because I've heard from many well-known horse trainers the concept of a horse has a worry cup and I've heard it from uh, Jer Ross Jacobs and Warwick Schiller um, yeah many especially western inspired horse trainers are talking about the horse's worry cup and the concept is as follows that the horse can hold like a cup full of worry and when the cup is full it will start to overflow and that's when the horse you know bucks or bolts or rears or jumps or does something kind of stupid and i will try to explain the concept with some water and because uh, I, of course, um, frequent a lot of horse-related uh, groups because I think it's very much fun to see yeah, what's going on in the discussions. And very often I see someone uh, explaining that, like, totally out of the blue, my horse became completely crazy and threw me off. There were no signs of anything before it happened. Or like a car came and scared my horse. And when I read this kind of post, I always kind of think, okay, how full was that horse's worry cup before the horse all of a sudden kind of exploded? Because in my mind, the horses don't explode all of a sudden. They explode when the worry cup is full. And now I'm going to try to explain how you can fill the worry cup up and also how you can empty it. Okay, so this is a horse and this is a horse's worry cup. And I am going to pick up the horse out in the pasture. And the horse doesn't really want me to catch him or her and kind of looks a bit away. But I put the halter on anyway and I just kind of drag the horse into the stable. Now the horse has some worry in it. Then I tie the horse up in cross ties and put the saddle on. And that's why my, when my horse goes a little bit like this, but it's standing still and I kind of ignore it and I tighten the gird and make sure the saddle is uh, nicely on the horse. So that's a little bit of worry right there. I'm filling the cup up. And then I want to put the bridle on. And my horse goes kind of like this, but I'm going to just hold the head down and pull the bridle over the horse's ears and tighten the nose back like this. Okay, that's a whole lot of worry. <laughs> then I bring my horse out of the stable and I tighten the reins to make sure the horse stands still while I mount. Okay. We're adding some more worry into the cup here. Then I ride off. And my horse is kind of looking at the mailbox or something. And I kind of pull a bit on the reins and kick the horse a bit to get past the mailbox. And I get past the mailbox and the horse is kind of calm, but you know, it's filling up the worry cup. So now it's like brim full. And that's when a bird flies up from the field and the horse goes like this, bolts and bucks and runs back to the stable. And that's when the rider goes, there was no signs of anything unusual with the horse at all. A bird flew up, spooked my horse. It was a freak accident. And now I'm in the hospital. And I don't understand anything because my horse is always so quiet and calm and does everything I say. Yeah, but what has happened is that the worry cup 
was full when something happened. The rider hasn't emptied the worry cup along the way because the rider has probably not seen what's actually going on with the horse. So now I can uh, try to empty out some worry here. There's a whole lot of water going on. Yeah, it was a, not only a freak accident, it was a splash accident. And although the rider had safety equipment from head to toe, she still got hurt. Okay, let's see. Is there another way to kind of do this? You take the same horse again. And you kind of you catch your horse and you notice that the horse is a little bit worried about being caught. So you kind of stand and wait and breathe, relax yourself, maybe go a little bit backwards and catch your horse's eye and make sure that the horse uh, is agreeing to you putting the halter on. Okay, you are emptying out worry like that. And then you bring the horse into the stable. And when you put the saddle on, you kind of notice that the horse's back becomes a bit tight and that the neck tightens. So you kind of make sure to move your horse's feet or maybe massage your horse a little bit so that the neck comes down again and the horse breathes uh, relaxed and is relaxed in the body when you tighten the girth and put the saddle on. So you are emptying worry. And you do the same with the bridle. Like you don't put pressure on the horse to make the horse put the head into the bridle, but you release the pressure to motivate the horse to lower the head and accept the bridle. So you are emptying worry again. Then you bring your horse out to the uh, outside the stable to mount. And you notice that your horse is a little bit tight. So you maybe go and check on the lateral flexion, like does the horse respond to feel in the reins? The pro horse probably doesn't, but then you make sure that the horse can respond to feel in your rein, both left and right, and kind of bend the neck with softness and relax to your rein aid. And then you might try to move the hind end over to see how that goes. How and you notice that the horse isn't crossing the hind legs over, but it's more like jumping around. Okay, so you do this exercise until the horse can cross the hind legs over without being stressed and without being too lazy. Like you have a nice forward there in your moving of the hind leg. And the horse has a nice bend in the body and it's not switching its tail or trying to bite you or kick or anything like that. Then you are also emptying worry right there because you're putting your horse's body into a relaxed posture plus you are also making sure that your rein aid and your leg aid makes the horse more relaxed and not stiffer so there's not so much worry left now but when you mount you make sure that you're not holding both reins tight to hold the horse in place that you have one rein loose Maybe the other one a little bit tighter. It's not kind of hanging on the horse for dear life to, to hinder it from going away when you mount. And then the horse has the possibility to kind of walk off in a small circle around you if the horse feels uncomfortable with you mounting. So finally you have mounted and emptied worry in your horse. There's very little worry left. <laughs> you ride forwards. And your horse becomes worried about the mailbox. But instead of then trying to push your horse or force your horse past the mailbox, what you might do is that you recognize, okay, my horse is a bit worried about the mailbox. I would just let him go wherever he wants. But when the horse goes away from the mailbox, I might put some pressure on him. And when the horse goes towards the mailbox, that's when I release the pressure. So you're giving your horse confidence against potentially scary objects. So the little worry that happened because of the mailbox is now also empty and your horse can move past the mailbox without being scared. And that's when a bird flies up 
on the field in front of you and spooks your horse. Okay, what happens? You have worry in your horse, but it doesn't overflow. But you notice, okay, my horse is now a bit stiff necked and unfocused. I can use my rein aid to connect with my horse again, or I can uh, do a bend to stop to make the horse's body relaxed and allow the horse to find its own stop and to empty out the worry again. So you can always, kind of, worry will always come in somehow. Like it's inevitable. You, you can't expect a horse that you are riding or handling to be calm at all times because life just isn't like that. And also sometimes we want our horses to be energized and maybe ride a fast gallop you know that will probably put a little bit of worry in your horse but by practicing on making your horse calm again you can easily empty it out and some trainers say that this is the most important thing a rider can do for the horse is to empty out the worry cup and keep the worry cup empty but you can't expect it to never kind of fill up because that would be probably very unrealistic to try to keep your horse calm at all times but you can keep the worry cup as empty as possible as at all times and that's when you have very little um, chances of freak accidents happening because there's always room here for a little worry and you know how to empty it out and i think most of the exercises that you learn in uh, ride like viking members group especially uh, the bend to stop where horse finds its own stop by crossing over behind and by bending in the body and relaxing the neck. That is a huge worry cup emptier right there. Because if you, in a situation like that, when your horse becomes worried, if you then stop the horse with two reins, then you are maybe you're stopping your horse, but you're not emptying worry. Worry is kind of building up all the time. So, um, Keep that in mind, and uh, I hope you kind of <laughs> understood the concept of the worry cup here. And I think most exercises uh, in this program will uh, help you empty your horse's uh, worry cup, and especially the bend to stop. And I also think that horses who have learned something by choice and by connecting with the trainer are less likely to have their worry cup overflowed in the first place because uh, both the connection and the choice-based training will make the horse less worried but if you have a training program that's not based on connecting with your horse you will probably not see if your horse is worried or not anyway plus uh, there might be a whole lot of constriction going on that is actually putting worry into the horse so by holding the horse on tight reins, not allowing the horse to walk off, like always keeping the horse, what you might say, obedient and always kind of using two reins to solve situations, then worry might be building up not only from the environment, but also from your riding and the training. But I'm not very worried about you guys <laughs> when it comes to that, because um, I think yeah, this members group is really awesome to be in because everyone is so understanding towards their horses and towards this com concept and I learn very much from you guys as well. But I thought I'd show you the worry cup uh, thing here so that if somebody talks about the worry cup you know what I mean. Yes and then I'm going to move on to the questions. We have two questions this evening. <laughs> 